Hello, I'm Mr Kitchen. I'm the subject leader for drama at Furnace Academy and I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about GCSE drama as an option at Key Stage 4. The first thing I'd like to say is drama is not just for actors. Obviously, if you're thinking of a career in the arts, particularly acting, film, TV, theatre, then obviously this might be the course for you. But I'd like you to take a moment just to think about some of the skills that we use in a drama course that might be useful in everyday life. Employers, colleges, universities are always asking for students who've got a certain range of abilities, those who can demonstrate the soft skills that we use regularly in drama. Skills such as communication, presentation skills, being able to work as part of a team, being able to think creatively, solve problems, have a sense of self-discipline, uh, motivate yourself to complete work. But most importantly, the ability to analyse, reflect and evaluate on your own work and the work of other people. And we'll be doing that a lot in GCSE drama. I would hope by the end of the course that most students who've been with me uh, leave the course being confident and outgoing people able to hold their own in public. So let me tell you a little bit about the course. First of all, it's a really good blend of both practical drama work, but it's also supported by a range of academic aspects too. All students will be expected to partake in aspects of performance during their lessons in workshops and rehearsals, etc. But that doesn't mean that you have to be assessed on your acting skills. Most students do choose that. However, there are options such as costume, lighting, set and sound design, which you can be assessed on in the course rather than being assessed as a performer. So let me tell you a little bit about what we do on the course. First of all, it is focused on the stage and theatre and our understanding of that world. So work will be practical. Uh, we'll be working on challenging plays, a range of different plays that we look at over the course. Students will also be invited to create their own devised work, so work that they're creating in response to some stimulus. They'll be rehearsing and performing and developing those skills. As I've already said, evaluating different forms, genres and styles of theatre. We'll learn about different production elements from lighting, sound and costume and set. We'll also make sure that we work academically and practically throughout the course with their peer group. Hopefully by the end of the course, students have expanded their artistic knowledge, their experiences of different cultures and time periods, and also widened their understanding of the, of the world in general and human nature. Let me talk to you now in a bit more detail about the structure of the course. There are three assessed components. The first one, component one, is called devising drama. So students work in a small group of their choice to create a piece of drama from a piece of stimulus. I may introduce something like a prop or a picture, a piece of text. Students will then take a significant period of time to work on that piece and develop their piece of drama. Students can choose to be assessed in a couple of different ways. They could decide to work as a performer and at the end of that particular production, they would then share that with the rest of the group. They might decide to be a designer, costume set, sound or lighting to support the group, in which case they wouldn't perform, but they would be expected to produce some evidence of their design and make sure it was put into the performance at the end. This component is assessed by the teacher and sent off for moderation by the exam board. There are 15 marks for the actual acting performance or the realisation of the design skill. And there are 45 marks for a portfolio that runs alongside the process. And in this, students will record and evaluate all the things that they've done on their assigned piece. So how they started, what happened in the middle of the, the process and how things ended and how they got to their final performance. So 60 marks in total for component one. Component two is performance from text. So in this particular component, students work in, again, a variety of different groupings from solo performances to pairs or up to groups of three, and they will select a play of their choice with my guidance. They'll take two extracts from that play, two key moments. Students can again choose whether to be assessed as performers and to act in those extracts or again as designers. This particular component is assessed by a visiting drama examiner who will sit and watch the live performance. There are 24 marks available for each of the two extracts, giving a total of 48 marks altogether. Component three is our final component. It's called Theatre Makers in Practice. And this is a one hour and 45 minute written exam. There are two sections. Section A 
five questions based on a renowned play that we study and we work on practically in lessons so students are really familiar with the text from an acting, directing and production element perspective. Section B, there'll be two questions asking students about a piece of live theatre that they'll have viewed during their time on the course. This could be a professional pantomime, it could be a piece of musical theatre. Any play that we may have seen could be used to answer questions in this section of the exam. Both questions do focus on those evaluation and analysing skills and the fact that students should understand performance elements and production skills. There are 45 marks for section A, 15 marks for section B, and that gives us again a total of 60 marks. During the course, there are obviously some expectations of students and other opportunities that we can offer. One of those is that we expect students to attend at least one trip to the theatre during their time on the course in order to complete the requirements of the written exam at the end of the course. However, as with every drama course, we offer as many theatre trips as is possible. The more students watch and see live theatre and drama, the better they are at understanding, evaluating it and performing for themselves. Obviously, every year we try and put on a large school production, a musical, uh, and obviously we would expect Key Stage 4 students to be involved in that production as much as possible, whether that's as a performer, um, showing their acting skills, or whether they're working backstage in costume, scenery, stage management, front of house, any of those elements um, students can volunteer to be a part of. Obviously, we also invite uh, professional theatre makers to come into school, whether that's technicians or actors. Uh, and often we have visiting theatre companies that come to school offering workshops and performances. Obviously, I'm able to give a range of advice and guidance to students on the next steps from this course, whether that be A level or other suitable qualifications or whether it's their first steps into the world of work. So why choose GCSE Drama? As I've already said, whichever path you're going to be choosing in terms of your further education or your career, I really want you to think that drama is not just for aspiring actors. There are a range of different careers that are looking out for the skills that we're developing constantly in drama. Let's just look at some of those fields in law, media, the arts, catering, business, retail, you name it. Those people are looking out for soft skills. For me, the question should not be why choose drama, but why not choose drama? Think about the skills it can offer you and the opportunities it affords. If you're still interested and consider looking further into a career in the arts, or even to see how the skills in drama can help you in other careers, please visit the UCAS website, which is www.ucas.com. If you look at their job subjects, they'll have a range of advice there about students interested in drama, music and performing arts. In the last slide, I'd just like to share with you a few quotes from members of staff, teachers that I've worked with over the years, those who've studied GCSE drama or A-level drama. They've told me what they got from the course. I'm hopeful when you look at the comments they make, you might see that some of these skills are really, really important and might potentially be something you would find useful if you're studying GCSE drama. Thank you for your time. Any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Thank you.